Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be covering virtualization and how to use Oracle VirtualBox 7. It's a great tool and is completely free. I will show you how to install a virtual machine using Ubuntu and go over many of the useful features and settings that you might need. So, what's VirtualBox and why would you want to run it? It's a Type 2 hypervisor which allows virtualization and it ultimately enables you to run multiple operating systems simultaneously on the same computer. This could be for learning purposes, labbing things up, development purposes and software compatibility testing. Many software vendors also use virtualization to create what's considered a virtual appliance for their customers which are pre-configured to ease server installation and configuration. Infrastructure consolidation and disaster recovery are also great reasons to virtualize, but they're mainly for the Type 1 hypervisors such as Oracle VM Server, VMware ESXi and Microsoft Hyper-V. So the software is completely free, and to download it go over to virtualbox.org, then go to Downloads, and then click the particular operating system that you're running under the platform packages to start the download. To perform the installation simply double click the executable file that you've already downloaded and you'll be greeted with the welcome dialog box. From here click next to continue with the installation where you can then choose the location of where to install VirtualBox and which components you want to install. These components are USB support which contains special drivers for your Windows host that VirtualBox needs to fully support USB devices within your virtual machines. The networking package which contains additional networking drivers for your Windows hosts that VirtualBox needs to support bridged networking. This enables a VM's network card to be accessed from other sources on your physical network. And Python support which contains Python scripting support for the VirtualBox API. This needs an already working Windows Python installation on the system to function and I'm going to make this unavailable as I don't need it. Ignore the network warning and just click yes to proceed. Then click install to start the actual installation. Once it's complete, you have the option to not start VirtualBox after the installation. I'm just going to leave mine checked and just click finish. And that's it. Now you're obviously going to need some ISO images to even install a virtual machine. As most of you will be using Windows 11 or Ubuntu, I will quickly show you how to get those. Go to ubuntu.com, go to the download drop down menu, then click on get Ubuntu desktop, scroll down and click download on the release you require. I recommend to use the long term supported release. In order to download a Windows 11 ISO, go to microsoft.com forward slash software hyphen download forward slash windows 11 scroll down to download windows 11 disk image and click select download choose the version and click download now Choose your language and click confirm. Once validated, click the 64 bit download link. So I'll firstly just give a quick overview of the interface known as the VirtualBox Manager. This is where you're going to create, configure and manage your virtual machines. 
The left pane is called the machine list. Once you have a virtual machine created, you're going to be able to right click here to display further options. You have settings, clone, move, export, etc. You can also click the menu icon to the right of the virtual machine to reveal further options. These are called the machine tool menu options. You have the details which displays the details pane for the particular VM you have selected. This shows things like the memory, the name of the operating system, the operating system that's being used and all the other virtual machine settings. You have the snapshot options. This would show all of the different snapshots for the VM. A snapshot is kind of like a previous state in time. People use it for, for backup reasons. You have the logs, which allow you to see the log viewer tool, allowing you to search system logs for the VM. You have the activity monitor, which allows you to view performance metrics for the VM. And you have the file manager, which allows you to manage files on the guest system. So the right pane is where all the properties and configuration of the selected VM are displayed. The toolbar across the top of the right pane is a quick way to create and manage your VMs. New is to create a new VM obviously. Add is where you want to bring in an existing VM to the machine list. Settings is to modify the configuration of the VM such as giving it more memory as an example which we'll go into later. Discard is to discard the safe state of the VM and shut it down. Obviously this is greyed out because this VM is not actually started, it's powered off. And start which provides you different options on how you want to start the VM. This would actually show, show uh, if the VM was already powered on. The tools menu in the left pane brings up the global tools menu. And there are six options so the welcome option would just display the welcome menu that you get when you on the initial launch the extension shows the extension pack manager which allows you to install VirtualBox extension packs media displays the virtual media manager tool to manage disk images network shows the network manager tool allowing you to configure and manage networks for your VMs Cloud, which allows you to configure connections into the cloud services such as Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and activities which display and monitor resource usage of your VMs. So now let's go over creating our first virtual machine. So we would click New, and this is going to bring up the wizard in the guided mode which makes it pretty straightforward and as the name suggests guides you through the process. So the first thing we're going to need is the name, the name of the virtual machine. This is what's going to be displayed in the virtual machine list on the left. Use something logical and something descriptive. In my case I'm just going to use Ubuntu. Then there's the folder which is just the location of where you want to store and run the virtual disk image, the definition file, the log files and also the snapshots would be stored here so make sure this has got enough, this location has got enough free space. Then there's the ISO image, this is obviously the installation file and in, in my case I want to use the Ubuntu file that I downloaded earlier. And then there's the, the type and version. But in the guided mode you can see that it, it knew what, what this was and it automatically changed it from Windows to Linux. You then have the unattended installation option. Now by default it's going to do the unattended installation and if you click next you can see what that actually means. It, it just predefines some of the settings to speed up the installation such as the username and password, the host name, the domain name. On Windows for example you can even predefine the product key. I'm going to skip that and do it the old way. In the hardware section I recommend checking the minimum requirements for the OS you're installing 
but it also depends on how much resource your host machine's got available and also what you plan to do with the VM. Obviously more intensive use cases require more CPU and memory. Don't allocate more than 50% of your host's memory and CPU cores though, as the performance of your host machine is going to suffer and probably crash. At the end of the day you can only assign what's physically available for use. If you plan to run more than one VM as well, you will also need to factor that into account. In my case I have a ton of available resource, I'll just give it 8GB of RAM and 4 cores. For the virtual hard disk, use the slider to allocate the amount of storage you are going to need. This is actually the minimum requirements for Linux, but you can obviously add more if you want. The default type of image file is thin provisioning, which means to only take storage as it is used, but if you want thick provisioning then check pre-allocate full size. This will immediately occupy the file size specified even if only a fraction of that virtual hard disk space is actually in use. Even though it takes more space though initially, a fixed file size is actually less overhead and is slightly faster, but I would always lean to saving space and leaving it unchecked. Other options are to add an existing hard disk file and to not add a virtual disk at all, but these are rarely used. Click next. View and review the summary and click finish to create your first VM. So now you've actually created the VM, you still need to actually power it on and install your chosen operating system. You would simply right click the VM in question, go to star and choose normal state to power it on. You can see that the ISO image has already been mounted to the virtual optical drive and so it will boot into the installation as a bare metal machine normally would. I'm now going to quickly install Ubuntu with all the default settings and I'm going to speed up the clip in the interest of time. Once the installation is complete, simply click restart now to restart the machine and when asked in regards to removing virtual media, simply press enter. VirtualBox will automatically remove that media from the virtual drive and the installation will be then complete. So that seems a logical place to end part one. Please make sure you subscribe to get notified for part 2 where I will be aiming to go into more depth such as modifying more of the VM hardware settings, the VM network inside of things, snapshots, cloning, VM groups, importing an appliance amongst other features. Thanks for watching today and take care.